Greetings and salutations, folks. This is episode 146 of the Masterclass. My name is Cam Brennan, and of course, I am joined all the way from Kansas, America, David Hoke. Yes, coming from you, coming to you, <laughs> from the land of Oz. Ooh, how have I never introduced you as <laughs> the land of Oz? Okay, quick. The uh, land of Oz. I'm going to uh, put you on the hot seat, Dave. If you, mm-hmm. if you were a character from the Wizard of Oz, which character most represents you? Which character most represents me? From the Wizard of Oz, the classic. Huh. And don't say Toto. <laughs> it is not Toto. So my my just gut immediate response would be the cowardly lion. Interesting. And uh why is that? You know, I I I think there is something for me in terms of going from being a pastor to being in law enforcement that uh you know having done it for 17 years i'm a little bit hesitant to to associate with anything cowardly <laughs> uh, i mean you do put on a bulletproof vest to go to work dave yes let's be yes, honest yes. <laughs> but that's that when when you ask that question that's who came to my mind of just that 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 cowardly lion and so uh i don't want to get too terribly deep into this i don't know if there was something for me that i felt like i had to prove uh oh in in the transition yeah in the transition but um yeah i i I would i would have to say i resonate with the cowardly lion uh maybe not so much at the beginning but maybe more at the end in terms of having given been given the um award of courage after the fact by the um wizard himself so interesting yeah i'll 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 let the psychologist dissect all that so (laughs) which i actually met with a psychologist today so did it go well it did go well yes so yeah did you have to lay on did you have to lay on the couch I did not have to lay on the couch, but I sat on a couch. Uh, I feel like that's a bit of a letdown. I'd be like, are you even real? Are you even really an actual psychologist if I don't have to lay on the couch? Well, so, so I wasn't there for actual like therapy versus like it was a background kind of a thing. But to be fair, there's nothing wrong with therapy. No, there is not. I, and I myself have been through therapy. Yes. So. Uh, outside of any kind of job application, I've been through therapy, so it is worthwhile. Yes, I would agree. Indeed. I don't know what character I would be, Dave. My first reaction was a flying monkey, but they're terrifying. <laughs> that's not really the the sort of I don't know ethos I'm trying to work with here. Mm-hmm. But I thought that was like that's a good obscure reference. I'll go with that. Uh, so the cowardly lion was looking for courage, right? Yes. The scarecrow was looking for a brain. Mm-hmm. And the tin man was looking for a heart. Mm-hmm. And Dorothy was just looking to not get really bad acid next time. Yes. Okay. Now that we yeah, she, was wanting, that. she was wanting to go home. That's like a... Anybody on any bad trip wants to go. Fair enough. I would probably relate most to the Tin Man. Hmm. Mainly because I think he could do a really good robot dance before he got all that WD-40 <laughs> in his joints. Not that I can. I just aspire to that one day. Yeah. Like, my goal is by the time Kennedy gets married to just have the robot just nailed. So I can be, yes. I can be that dad at the wedding that everyone's like, oh gosh, get him off the floor. I mean, like he's really good, but this is embarrassing. But he's also really good. Just make it stop. Yeah. So Caroline's getting married in January of 2020. And please tell me you have at least three things planned for that, as far as embarrassing so yes, dad yes. moves. Okay. Yes, we do have. Well, we're working on it. 
it's it's it may not be a hundred percent playing, but well, you don't need to spill the beans now. But the fact that the wheels are turning makes me very happy. Yes, very excited about that. Also, so. I will need video evidence of whatever happens. I will say this: that we are going to Funky Town. <laughs> Yes, 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 Oh, man, that's going in the show notes. Funky town. I'm not surprised at all that Caroline would be totally down with something like that. That's fantastic. Yes, so that, that you know, she's down with it. But, yes, funky town was very much a part of my desire to... That's going to be so, stuck yeah, in my head for the next two days, and I'm not even mad about it. <laughs> not even mad about it. So, yeah, we're, so we are very excited about the father, father-daughter dance. Just please don't, like, pull a muscle. Like you said, it may be more embarrassing than anything, but... Yeah, but that's kind of the fun of it, right? We will certainly enjoy ourselves, yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, video, please. I'm going to... Absolutely. Will there be an afro involved? Um, no. Some sequined bell bottoms, perhaps? Um, uh, no. <sighs> All right. You know, I'm going to stop there before I get disappointed. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how to transition out of that, Dave. My brain is just so stuck right there right now. <laughs> That's going to be glorious. All right. Anyways, we should move on before I just totally camp there and... All right. I'm I'm unsavable at that point. I'll be locked in Funky Town Purgatory. It's a good place to be. Ah, for a while. For a while. And then at some point I'm like, can we just go to Sleepy Town? Because my body hurts from all the funkiness. No, then you need to go to Electric Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in the show notes, too. Which... I don't believe it's going to be a part of the father-daughter dance, but should be on the. I definitely, yeah. I turn it to eleven when Electric Avenue comes on. No Spinal Tap joke, I promise. (laughs) Wow. Well, this has been an interesting uh, start to the show. Yes. Before we uh, dive into the Bible. Which, of mm-hmm. course, if you've never listened to the show, you've clearly put together at this point that that's what the show is about. It's talking Hopefully. about the Bible. I don't even think Sherlock could have sleuthed that one out, <laughs> even with the bright red cross on the show note or the show art. Anyways, uh, before we dive into that, I, I, maybe we'll do the business up front and we can do the party in the back, and this will be the mullet episode. That's the show Woo-hoo! title Mullet. Mullet episode. Episode. Which, by the way, I'm beginning to believe is becoming is coming back more and more. Which is I'm seeing further proof that the children of this generation are going to end humanity. <laughs> the Kentucky waterfall does not belong on someone's <laughs> head. Okay? It just doesn't. No. You want to wear a Canadian tuxedo? That's up to you. But the Kentucky waterfall does not belong on your head. Hmm. You know what a Canadian tuxedo is, Dave? I have an assumption, but I guess I would have to admit I don't. What's your assumption? I'm not judging. I'm just curious. (laughs) (laughs) I'm waiting. I I don't know. You said you had an assumption. It's not a hockey jersey. If that's where you're going. No, no, no. So a Canadian tuxedo is jeans and a jean jacket that match. Oh no, that match. <laughs> no, because we all know you've got to have denims that don't match. Okay, that's a fashion tip. Yeah. No, that is not where I was going. So with you that. could see, you could see how a Canadian tuxedo and a Kentucky waterfall would be a pair made in 1984 heaven. Sure. With maybe some like oversized Nike pump high tops or Reebok pumps. Nike didn't do the pumps. Gosh, Cameron. Oh. 
<laughs> but your cultural <laughs> reference is correct. So I was at Nordstrom was Nordstrom's with my family here re- recently. Okay, you can't get a Canadian tuxedo at Nordstrom's. No, they had jean jackets at Nordstrom's. And I was trying to convince my family that I needed a jeans jacket. No, you know what you need, Dave? What's that? You need some overalls. I used to have them. I don't have them now. I'm just saying, I saw them at Target the other day, and they were like in the women's (laughs) section, and they were like, you know, super cute and all that. And I was like, (laughs) okay, how is it it possible that overalls, which were like one of the most utilitarian male outfits, right, has now become this like chic, feminine, (laughs) cute little like, you know, I'm just going to have one strap because I want to be kind of flirty. Like, no, that was like overalls were for dudes that were covered in grease and had wrenches all about their person. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Anyways, I don't know what's going on right now. Uh, I think the, people have stopped listening. The mullet ap- episode slash fashion police. That's what we're calling this one. <laughs> also, there is a tag team in the WWE called the Fashion Police, and they're perfect. Mm. They are perfect. Nice. Tyler Breeze and Fandango. One of them comes down to the ring with his phone on selfie mode, and it shows on the big screen behind him. So he's taking selfies the whole way down oh, the ramp. Oh, that's cool! And then he lays, in the, he like lays in the ring and takes a selfie. And then the other one is like a <laughs> salsa dancer who just thrusts his hips as much as possible. And it's like it's like bad comedy, and it's oh, it's so good. Anyways, it's gonna go on the show notes too. This is gonna be a rich <laughs> list of links. Fashion police. All right, they give out. Um, fashion tickets to other wrestlers that are dressed ugly. It's quite funny. Yes. So Romans chapter 12, uh, uh-huh. verse three, but we're going to do the business first. We didn't, we didn't do the business. The business is this folks. You've made it this far. Whether this is your first episode or your 146. Also time out. If you have listened to every episode of this show, please let us know. We want to shout it from the rooftops that you have done. Cause that's like, a lot of time and an incredibly long commitment. I'll say this. If you have listened to over a hundred episodes of our 146, you need to email us or call in on the phone number and let us know. Cause that's super cool. And we want to celebrate that and we'll give you a high five and maybe something else cool that I haven't thought of yet, but you know, sometimes I need. I, I would agree with that. If you listen to over a hundred episodes and you let us know at the very least, there's a gift card. In your future. I'm so glad Dave makes more money than I do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, 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 will, I will support the, the gift card. But yes, kudos to you if you've made it this far. Um, but all of that, yes, agreed. Uh, but real quick, um, if you could leave us a review on iTunes, just like an honest-to-goodness, authentic review. It doesn't have to be five stars. I don't want you to, you know, to fake it. but iTunes reviews really do help shows get um, presented to new potential listeners. And if you have ever found the show to be beneficial or enjoyable, it really only takes like two minutes to leave a review. And that would be super, super awesome of you. We, we really, we, I don't like doing this part of the stuff, but it really does help the show out by getting potential new listeners um, exposed to what the show is. That only increases with people leaving reviews on the show or sharing it on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or I don't know, is MySpace back? I don't, I don't know, but (laughs) I would just ask, I would just ask this. If, if this show has been, beneficial or enjoyable to you at some point in the past or the present, you would consider sharing it with somebody else. That's all I'm going to ask. You can keep listening for free because that's what the show's, you know, it's free. There's no ads, nothing like that. Um, but an iTunes review or a share with uh, a friend or a coworker or a family member uh, like that, that to us is like, that's currency, right? Because that means that you are, we have earned your trust enough that you would tell someone you care about, about the show. And that's more than we could ever ask or repay. So that's that. Yep. 
Um, there we go. Uh, David. Yes, sir. What, what verses are we reading in Romans 12? So we're going to take a look at Romans 12, 3 through 8. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. So not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment. That is, it's like one of those things, again, like that embodies Paul's communication style to me. It is so clear and so concise, like even terse, but it, covers such a multitude of attitudes and personalities and like issues, right? Mm -hmm. Like the amount of people that this is good advice for is insane. Don't think of yourself more highly than you like to think of yourself, but think with sober judgment. And that, that term sober judgment stands out to me hugely if, if you take the opposite of sober that would be drunk right or mm -hmm. you know under the influence and how often do you see videos of people that are drunk or high thinking that they're the king of, t of the universe the master of time and space if you will and they try and do something that they think they're completely capable of and wind up crashing through a table or, you know, look, somehow not breaking their necks, trying, you know, a flip off of something or driving while they're drunk or, you know, whatever the case may be, right? You see these fail videos, which is like, how are, how is that a thing? You know, this is someone who's making a terrible life decision and potentially endangering others, but this is like our entertainment. That That's another topic. But th this idea of sober judgment, right? When we are yep. under the influence of, you know, alcohol or drugs, but also under the influence of our own ego, under the influence of the adulation of others, under the influence of celebrity or popularity, right? We tend to think of ourselves as better than reality, right? Uh, that mm -hmm. we are, that we are more perfect, that we are less flawed, that we are cooler even, or that we are smarter or better looking or, you know, all of the things that we want to project, right? Those, when we are not thinking with sober judgment, those things can all inflate our self-perception and therefore deceive ourselves. And so for him to say to not think of ourselves more highly, but to think with sober judgment, like that just stands out so much to me of like, hey, you know, you numbskull actually look in the mirror, not necessarily at your physical appearance, but like at your inward self, right? Your, your motivations, your insecurities, your, your faults, all of that stuff. And with sober judgment, accurately view yourself and operate from that, uh, that, that stance, that, that place. Right. And that's, you know, sobering, right? That's the word that comes to mind, but this, this to me is, is like a, uh, the, the phrase shot across the bow comes to mind. Like everyone pay attention. I have something to say. You all think too much about yourselves because you're human, but we need to, you know, with sober minds actually process what's going on. And 
I think that's just a really good place to start any conversation or discussion, right? That sober judgment goes a long way in getting rid of the, the BS and dealing with the reality of the situation. Yeah, I, I do agree that very much so that, that sober judgment is an important phrase here. And I think much of our, our society today, we have maybe even falsely this kind of elevated opinion of ourselves and how important that we are. And I don't know. Um, one of the thoughts that's coming to my mind as we're talking about this is, uh, I don't know how sincere some of those opinions are. Sometimes I think it's a false elevation of our opinion of ourselves because, uh, that's a society. That's what the world tells us of. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to choose to have a, a higher opinion of myself because uh, for me to truly be effective, to truly um, realize self-actualization, I need to have that higher opinion of myself. And I, I don't think that's true. I think Jesus, the gospel, uh, uh, Paul's message to us here is that uh, humility is important. This is not about self-deprecation. This is about truly kind of that sense of, as I think about God, as I think about the universe, as I think about the world, as I think about my place in all of that, I need to have a realistic perspective. I need to say, this is where I am. And again, it's not about self-deprecation, putting yourself, you know, kind of at this lower point than you really are and not putting yourself at higher than you are, but taking a realistic look of this is sort of my place and this is where I land and being okay with that and embracing that and allowing God to work through that. Um, the thought that, that is coming to my mind here, and, and I don't think this is completely the, the, uh, a parallel, but I think it's somewhat valid, is folks that go through Alcoholics Anonymous and go through the 12 steps and one of the things that's very important in that is sort of acknowledging this uh, existence of a God, a supreme being that is higher than I am, and understanding my place in the whole scheme of things. And I, I, I guess for me, that's 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 that is where I land in terms of having a realistic view of. What is my place in the whole scheme of things? Not thinking too highly, not overly beating ourselves up, but that realistic, because I think that foundation allows us then to pursue our God, pursue him, and allow him to work in our lives. Yeah, I think, like, sp specifically for me, the the bouncing back and forth between the thinking too highly and then the beating myself <laughs> up thing. Like that's a pretty regular, you know, journey that I make. Amen. And it's not fun. Right. Cause like you're on your high horse and you're feeling good and oh my gosh, like I'm just the best. And then reality sets in and then you get mad at yourself and you're like, Oh, you're such an idiot. And blah, blah. But like how much more steady is that middle ground of like the sober judgment, right? Not getting, not getting so full of yourself, but also not getting so down on yourself and just realizing like there's, there's this, there's this sort of steady flat ground between the, 
the slippery slope to hubris and the slippery slope to self-deprecation, right? Or mm-hmm. self-hatred or whatever. Um, and that's, you know, I think something that as I get older, I'm desiring more and more, uh, but also dealing with the habits, you know, of my life of the, the, the opposite sides of that flat ground. Right. And, and the, the tendencies I have to go one way and then the other and one way, like instead of like slaloming down this hill, like let's just cruise down the, the, the good path. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah, just something that has been, uh, on my mind lately of, of less of the TikTok motion and more of just the steady, you know, like the, the tortoise and the hare thing, right? Being less frenetic and less susceptible to rapid mood, personality, uh, you know, habit changes and more just like the slow and the steady wins the race, right? Like mm-hmm. being a lot more conscientious about what it means to follow Christ, what it means to love my wife, to love my daughter, to, to show up to work, you know, to love the teenagers and the adults in the youth ministry. And, and that is a significant shift in not only how I think, but how, or how I want to think, but also how I want to act. And um, it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, I know that putting in the hard work now to change is going to reap benefits down the road. But with any habit change comes the, the desire to just do it how I've always done it. Like put the glove back on, put the, you know, that, that comfortable ratty pair of sweatpants. It just feels so good. But you know, it's like not what you need in your life. Like wear a belt, man. Like <laughs> it's tough, especially if you have, you know, habits and stuff to break that are, that are life draining instead of life giving, you know? Yeah. So I come back to our discussion on Eugene Pre- Peterson and the long obedience in the same direction. Is that who that quote is from? Okay. I'm pretty sure it's from him. And um, I actually had this conversation uh, with a friend this week who is older than I am of just that, yeah, not, not getting so hung up and, and beating yourself up over every little thing that you do. Because the reality is, is we are going to make mistakes. We're going to stumble. And again, it's, it's not an excuse to do those things. But at the same time, I don't think we should beat ourselves up over those things and really kind of going, I'm in this for the long term. I'm going to continue to pursue him. I'm going to mess up here and there. But in the long term and the extended journey, I'm continuing to pursue him. I desire him. I want to know him. I want to be in a relationship with him. So. I'm approaching 50 years old. I don't think that's old. I really don't. I feel like I'm very much in that prime of my life as 50. But I remember being a younger Christian 20 and even 30 years ago and hearing men who are older than I am talking about this, like, I want to finish strong and not totally understanding what they meant in terms of finishing strong. And like I said, close to 50. It makes more sense to me in terms of there are so many things that will come in and try to derail you, maybe get you off track for a while, but ultimately you kind of stick to that whole idea of I am in this for the long haul. I'm going to continue to pursue Jesus. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to get off the path, you know, to some degree. But ultimately, I continue to pursue him and desire to finish well. And it's not easy. You're going to mess up. You're going to kind of take those rabbit trails and you're going to get off the, the obvious path. But I think the, the purpose is or the, 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 what we're striving for is in the long run, I continue to go after 
him. And even in these down times or these moments where I don't feel like I'm doing exactly what I, I feel like I should be doing, I still come back to him and I still pursue him. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that 50 is not old. That makes me feel good. I know that wasn't the point of what you were saying, but. Yep. Just, you know, I appreciate that. Carrying on, it says. Each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Yeah. Because, you know, we love loaded phrases around here. I don't even, I don't even know where to begin with that. But think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. So, like, does that give some people the slack to just be not sober their whole life? I, like, I, I don't think that's what that means, but maybe it's we won't we won't be judged based on other people but based on ourselves i i there's just a lot there that i don't know i don't know david so so one of the things i guess as you say that i would agree with or i think is true is obviously not everybody's journey is the same and as everybody's journey is not the same, I don't think there's completely the um, expectation that everybody will strive to the same level of what God is calling to them to do. So is it an excuse for people to do less? No. But does God have a different expectation for different people? Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with that too. I don't really think that the opposite is necessary, right? That that God would, you know, evil, evil level playing field. <laughs> 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 yeah. It, it, it's just one of those like like post fixes, right? Here's the main idea. Also, here's this little piece, and it's like, well, that's just a heavy bit of theology. <laughs> like, let's have seven denominations about that, please. Uh, so moving on, for as in one body, we have, and this is, I think, him trying to explain, you know, the little nugget he just dropped right there. For as in one body, we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given us. Let us use them. Which, okay, this is a really helpful explanation of what Paul, you know, just said there, right? Like, you know, the big toe and the brain have different options or yes. different uh, functions, right? Different responsibilities, different parts. The the elbow and the knee, while similar in the fact that they bend, serve very different purposes in the locomotion or, you know, use of a body. Same with, like, the heart and the bowel. Both really important, uh, but totally different. You know, or the eye or the ear. Eyes and ears and mouth and... Sorry, my daughter was singing that <laughs> and doing the face motions the other day, and I thought it was adorable. Paul is giving a great example of, you know, what it means to each according to the measure of their faith, right? Like we have, we have been given by God because he created us in his image, right? Different capacities, different capabilities, different inclinations, different interests, different personality types, different skills, different talents, so that as a collective group, as a collective family, as a collective body, we can bring all of that together, all of our different functions, all of our different roles, all of our different everything to make one collective awesome thing. We're really good as at human, really good as humans at saying, oh, wow, you're the pinky toe. You don't serve a function or you're the gallbladder. Get out of here. We don't need you. I'm the brain. I'm the heart. I'm the, you know, whatever, like in, in, uh, making a hierarchy, right? Like, why did the Israelites want a king? Because they needed hierarchy, right? Well, we've got God, but we want a king. <laughs> oh, you idiots. Uh, but I would have made the same choice. So, I'm, seriously, I would have wanted to be king. 
not for the responsibility, but for all of the things that go along with it. All the nice food, yep. all the nice things, all the pretty women, right? Oh, <laughs> responsibility, I'll deal with that later. More wine! So, anyways, yes, that 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 is the point, right? Different things for different reasons or different seasons. Yep. And alas, the body is one cohesive unit, which is pretty cool. Because we all know what happened by accident. <laughs> so, you know, that's why we're gathered here today. So, <laughs> yeah, I didn't really, I just kind of left you hanging there, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry, Dave. And this may fall a little bit short because not everybody is. So, there's a radio ad here in the Kansas City area for a Dean Belay who is referred to, he refers to himself as Mr. Remodeler. So Mr. Remodeler. So he does like Mr. renovations what? of bathrooms and kitchens and that sort of thing. Oh, gotcha. This is not a re- recommendation for the guy at all, but he had a, he had a commercial that was on a few years ago where he kind of talks about, He's a farm boy from Missouri, and Harry Truman, president of the United States of America, was also a farm boy from Missouri. And so Dean Blay, who is Mr. Remodeler and does construction and will redo your bathroom, redo your kitchen, kind of makes a point of just saying, hey, I'm not a Harry Truman. While we both had the same beginnings and the same background, he became president of the United States, and I make the place where you have bowel movements better. (laughs) 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 And in his commercial, he just, you know, he kind of acknowledges of, do I wish I was a Harry Truman? Yeah, I, I, I really wish I was a Harry Truman. I wish I had been president of the United States. I wish I had made a significant impact on how you know World War II ended and what that meant for the world. But the reality is, is my lot in life was to be Mr. Remodeler. I make your, your bathrooms better for you. I make your kitchens better for you. And again, this isn't an endorsement one one way or the other because I haven't used him, but I think the point is valid of, you know, it could be really easy for him to dwell on the fact that he never became president, president of the United States, or he can embrace his role as somebody that, you know, does what he does and has an impact on the world. And I think for all of us, this is a place where we find ourselves, you know, we want to have a significant impact on the kingdom. We want to say that we played a significant role in bringing Mm -hmm. glory to God and bringing people to know him and in doing, uh, you know, just awesome things. All of us would love to be like a Billy Graham type. And the reality is, is vast majority of us are not going to be that. And uh, we really shouldn't beat ourselves up over that. Uh, Because I think there's two things that happens. One, we can get so, you know, kind of consumed with this, I've got to have a significant impact and really be somebody that's known through in history that we do nothing. And then two, the reality is, is I think that is where vast majority of the kingdom work actually happens. Vast majority of the people come to know Jesus through a friend. Vast majority of us come to know Jesus through a youth pastor, through somebody that does not have, quote unquote, a significant role in history but has taken the Great Commission seriously and has decided, I'm going to do this in a way that does not 
bring accolades, does not bring a lot of recognition to who I am and how I do it. And, you know, for some, for that matter, I, I, I would venture to guess that some of us might even think we failed at this task. When the reality is, is God is asking us to be faithful to him, trusting him, allowing the Holy Spirit to do his work, and we do what is asked of us, and that is to talk about Jesus, to share Jesus, to let other people know the importance of uh, repentance and accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And as we've said on this show before, allowing the outcomes to be to, to be up to him and not us. I'll quit my rambling and just say that <laughs> I'm totally having a picture of uh, the scene in the movie Stripes. <laughs> Army training, sir. Army training, sir. Well, while Bill Murray refers to their commanding officer as the big toe, he <laughs> is our big toe. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, my gosh. Well done, sir. And you know what? Being the big toe sometimes feels like yeah i'm the big toe what's the big deal who gives a rat's you know what a but rat's the reality big toe. yeah yes the rat's big toe but the reality is is it is important to be the big toe the middle toe the small toe the piggy that went to the market wee 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 all the way home yeah so i won't belabor that point because i think the holy spirit can uh handle that but um we do not, we certainly do not when it comes to the kingdom of heaven and what God has called us to be, we do not need to be an influencer on the worldwide level. It is certainly appropriate to be an influencer to our family, moms, dads our children our grandparents our uncles and cousins and those sorts of things it is valid to be an influencer to our neighbor it is absolutely valid to be an influencer to the people that we work with our bosses those that we may supervise and again it does not have to be a monumentous moment, but it is okay to simply just speak truth into someone's life and to let them know that we love them and that God loves them and allow the Holy Spirit to do what he is created to do. Hashtag amen. <laughs> I like that. I was going to say other mean things about social media, but decided. <laughs> be sarcastic and said because that's you know how you accomplish things all right uh so the last like bit of this verse right uh if prophecy then this if service then that extortion ex not ex extortion exhortation <laughs> slightly different uh contribution leadership all that stuff right that's just paul giving examples to different people in different parts of the body of like, if this is your thing, then be this way. If that's your thing, then be that way. But like, Hey, let's all take what we've got and put it towards God and his glory and the growth of the kingdom. Right. Yep. Yeah. And I, and that is, I would say this is one of those places where, um, if, if, if I could say that there's some weight to it, some expectation to it, a sense of you're not going to be able to pass the buck. If God has designed you to do something, then you better do it. Mm -hmm. And that it, it, it's simple as that. And everybody has been designed to do something. So do it. Do it. Do it. Bacardi and Coke. Do it. <laughs> See, I was thinking Harsky, uh, Harsky, <laughs> Starsky and Hutch. That's Starsky and Hutch, do it, do it, do it, do, do it. it. Bacardi and Coke, do it. I am Don, do whatever. It. I'm the <laughs> light, the light king of Eastern Pennsylvania. Do it, do it, do it. And then the Water Boy, you can do it. 
<laughs> oh no, we suck again. <laughs> oh no, we suck again. You can do it. So yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure that transition was just really disappointing to everyone listening. <laughs> Well, yeah, they're like, you know this what? Podcast sucks. It really, really sucks. Oh, this <laughs> podcast sucks. <laughs> okay, so I will say this: I was on a negotiation once. Oh no! Okay, this. Where the only thing? No, 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 no. The only thing the guy wanted was a Gatorade. <laughs> that is what he wanted. Was a Gatorade. And oh, me no. and about four other people, maybe five. We're in the room with this guy who was threatening to jump out the window. And we were trying to convince him to drink his Gatorade and that we wouldn't, quote unquote, poompa him before he I had don't a know chance. What that means, but that okay. means that means tackle him and take him to the ground. Poompa. Okay. But as as we're in this room with five other people, I I literally started going, Water sucks. It really, really sucks. Water sucks. <laughs> it really, really sucks. Gatorade. 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 Oh my God, are we really doing this? <laughs> and long story short, was he reached for the Gatorade, he drank it, and then he got poom pawed. <laughs> but he got his Gatorade and he got a chance to drink it. So. And he didn't jump out a window. He did not jump out the window. Always Thank you. Thank you, time. Jesus. Yes. Well. That started and ended weird, but I think the middle part was kind of good. <laughs> yes. It's kind of like, that was like a mullet episode. It starts kind of funny and it, and it ends kind of funny, but somewhere in the middle, it kind of makes more sense. Yes. And we'll let Jesus take care of that. The Holy Spirit. So, Yeah, man. We always kind of, <laughs> we always kind of give, give him some hard, hard uh, sledding there, don't we? <laughs> sure. He's like he's like the uh he's like the the English tutor at college that has to deal with like the quintessential jock who doesn't know anything. He's like, How am I supposed to turn this into English? <laughs> well, that's your job, and I'm sorry. Yes. All right, well uh, here we are. Let's pump slam on the brakes here and uh turn right into the end. Uh thanks so much for listening, you intelligent, lovely, wonderful human being. And uh, we'll be back next time. And yeah, we're, we already did the business. So uh, farewell. Bye. Bye.